Russia hitting Ukraine's infrastructure with massive strikes across the country. Power plants in several regions targeted by both kamikaze drones and cruise missiles. This video purports to show Ukraine taking down one of them. But some hitting civilian areas like this residential building in the southern town, Mykolaiv. We woke up at 1.45 a.m. because of a very loud explosion. It's impossible to describe it. There was so much dust. The Ukrainians say 30 percent of their energy infrastructure has already been destroyed by Moscow's blitz. Key installations like this power plant in the city Dnipro hit by multiple missiles. Ukraine's air defenses sometimes also overwhelmed by swarms of cheap kamikaze drones. The world can and must stop this terror. When we talk about Ukraine's need for air and missile defense systems, we talk about real lives taken by terrorists. Kiev believes Moscow is resorting to drone strikes because its forces are running out of precision cruise missiles. Stocks of some weapons are already critically low, Ukraine's military intelligence claims. But Russia's army is showing no signs of letting up. During the last 24 hours, the armed forces of the Russian Federation continued to deploy long-range, high-precision weapons, both air and sea-based, on Ukraine's military command sites and energy infrastructure. Russia continues to face major problems with its mobilization effort. While many Russian regions claim they fulfilled their recruitment targets, some recruits complain they're not getting adequately compensated. The motherland called, so we are all here and we are going to defend it. But while we care about the motherland, it does not care about us at all. The question is, when will it be done? We will go there now and our relatives, who have been staying at home for a whole month without any provision, they are struggling. In a month, they will be homeless. Ukrainian officials believe despite Russia's strikes, its forces will prevail on the battlefield. A senior intelligence leader saying Russia's defeat is inevitable. And one of the reasons, Aaron, why the Ukrainians are so confident is, of course, that situation down in Kherson, where the Ukrainians are saying they're continuing to make some pretty significant gain, of course, closing in on the capital city of that region, which is also called Kherson, hearing now from pro-Russian officials that they want to start evacuating civilians from that area simply because the Ukrainians are coming so close. One of the only places, uh, by the way, where the Ukrainians are having more trouble is actually where I am right now. It's the kramatorsk Bakhmut region, and this is where they're fighting some of the toughest Russian fighters from that private military company called Wagner, Aaron. Mm, the Wagner Group. All right, thank you very much, Fred, uh, from Dnipro tonight. I want to bring in now the White House National Security Council spokesman, John Kirby. And, Admiral, I appreciate your time. Uh, look, we're, we're hearing Putin's top commander talk about what he says are difficult decisions when it comes to Kherson. He said that today in an interview. Kherson, of course, has been under Russian control since the beginning of the war. Uh, Ukraine has made some significant gains there. Uh, what does your intelligence indicate? Is, is Ukraine on the verge of another major win there? They certainly are putting a lot of pressure on the Russian troops that are uh, around uh, the, the sort of the northwestern edge uh, of their presence in the Kherson Oblast. They're across the Dnipro River, uh, Dnipro River, uh, uh, and but they're but they're but they're sort of isolated. And so the Ukrainians are putting a lot of pressure on them, uh, Aaron. Uh, and we're, they're they're sort of advancing on multiple fronts in that part part of the Kherson uh, Oblast. Now I will tell you that just from what we've been seeing the last 24, 48 hours, uh, there hasn't been a lot of geographic advances made by the Ukrainians, but they are applying a lot more pressure in that area. And that would explain why uh, some Russian officials are thinking about maybe moving those troops uh, back across the river so that they don't get cut off. So in the context here, the head of Ukraine's defense intelligence agency uh, predicts that the war will end, quote, by the summer. By the summer, everything should be over. Uh, that really stood out to me. I haven't heard anybody else make such a prediction. Do you think yeah. that that's possible? Uh, well, look, we, we think the war should end today, and we'd, we'd love it to end right, right, right as soon as possible. Um, uh, shorter the better, obviously. I think everybody wants to see all this death and destruction uh, come to a close and for the Ukrainian people to enjoy their sovereignty and their independence again. Uh, I am not in a position where uh, I could say we could verify uh, that prediction by summer. Um, I think you need to be real careful with war. It's unpredictable, as we have all seen ourselves over the last 20 years uh, here in the United States. Uh, very difficult to, to say with uh, accuracy you know, that uh, the war is going to end on a certain date. Now, we do know the bad weather's coming. 
uh, and it's yeah. going to make it hard for both armies to be able to maneuver uh, in either the Donbass or down in the south uh, due to the muddy roads, the, the, the constant uh, uh, rain, and, of course, the cloud cover. So we're going to have to see where things end up uh, come wintertime. So in, into this is, is a war that in some ways seems to be getting bigger and broadening. Admiral, I'm talking about Iran, we, we've confirmed tonight that Iran sent military personnel to Crimea to train Russian troops on using those Iranian-made kamikaze drones. And the Washington Post actually reports that Iran is maybe going to be sending ballistic missiles to Russia, too, which would be right incredible. You look at the, 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 those Iskander missiles that Putin had at the beginning of the war, nearly 90 percent of them are gone. The Iranian missiles could, could theoretically replace or even give him more than he had before. It's unclear. What do you think? Could Iranian arms help transform Putin's depleted arsenal? I think it remains to be seen, Aaron. It really does. I think it's too soon to, to, to know what kind of an impact that uh, Iran support is going to have on the battlefield. Um, they, they, are, they, they do have a burgeoning ballistic missile program at home, uh, and certainly they have an intrinsic organic ability to create or to manufacture these drones. But whether it's going to have a strategic effect on the battlefield, again, I just I, I think we need, uh, we need to know a lot more. I mean, so far, I think you could say that it hasn't. I mean, in fact, all they've done uh, with these attacks over the last few days is stiffen the resolve of the Ukrainian people uh, and make them more determined to, to claw back territory that is rightfully theirs. So I think we're just going to have to we'll see where, where this goes. Uh, there's another uh, aspect of the story of the U.S. relation with Russia that you have been closely involved with. The WNBA star Brittany Griner is still there in, in Russia. She spent her 32nd birthday today in prison. She released a statement through her lawyers. Uh, Admiral that said, quote, thank you everyone for fighting so hard to get me home. All the support and love are definitely helping me. Uh, but yet she's still there. Uh, the U.S. offered the notorious arms dealer Victor Boot as part of a prisoner swap. Uh, but our understanding is that uh, Russia has not provided any serious counteroffer. Yeah. What do you think right now? Do they have any interest in releasing Griner? We we are working that real hard, uh, Aaron. Um, I can't speak for Russian intentions. I can tell you that uh, we have made a very serious proposal. We continue to be in discussions uh, with Russian officials about about finding a way to bring her and Mr. Whalen home. Right. Uh, she Whalen. shouldn't have to spend uh, another day, let alone another birthday, uh, in, in wrongful detention uh, in, in Russia. And we are working that uh, real, real hard. I, I can tell you it's top of mind for the president. It's top of mind for everybody here on the national security team. Uh, we want to get these two Americans home. And we're we're willing to continue to have those kinds of discussions with Russian officials. We urge them, of course, to take us up on the proposal. Uh, short of that, we're willing to keep talking to them. All right. Thank you very much, Admiral John Kirby there uh, with the Security Council. And I want to go now to Dan Rice, Special Advisor to the Commander-in-Chief of Ukraine's Armed Forces. And Dan, you just heard John, John Kirby talk about the ballistic missiles that Iran may start sensing. It's too early to, to tell whether they could transform things. But obviously, from a numerical perspective, it's possible that it could, uh, you know, fill up that depleted inventory. How much more does the Ukrainian military right now, the chief of the armed forces, say to you that they need to stop Russia's air assault, both drone and missile? Well, the biggest thing they need right now are air defense systems, both um, uh, missiles and, uh, and aircraft. We really need a Ukrainian air force uh, to be restocked. Um, but we are putting in a lot of air defense systems. They're just getting there, though, like the, the NAMAS, uh, NASAM system made mm -hmm. by... Because they keep saying we only have 10% of what we need. They, they need a lot more. And you can never defend everywhere. So that's the thing about the, the, this war. It's 1,200-mile front. So you can only really defend your key cities. You can't defend everywhere. But they are defending it. But the Russian attack under this new general is ruthlessly attacking the civilian population, which is a war crime, mm -hmm. but they've never been charged with any in the other wars. But they're attacking the cities, trying to attack the, the, the grid, making it a very difficult winner. They are trying to, in my opinion, trying to get to the negotiating table to try to go back to the 2014 lines. Ukraine won't have it. Ukraine wants all of their land back, back to the 91 lines. They really need air defense systems. They need aircraft. So ideally, the Poles want to give them uh, their old Russian fighters, and the Ukrainians know how to operate them. They know how to maintain them. Yeah, if we get those to them right away, we mm. give F-16s to the, to the Poles, and these are already fully depreciated.